frustrating things for a lot of general chemistry students is the concept of stoichiometry percent yield and limiting reagent. And it's really not difficult if you know uh, how to do some really simple mathematics. And this is how you do math for pretty much any general chemistry class uh, from Gen Chem 1 all the way up to Gen Chem 2. And ideally, pretty much any life science class outside of mathematics. This is all the math that I've ever actually had to do, I think. Um, so what I want you to imagine is a hypothetical situation where you know this, you know x2, you know y1, and you want to find out what y2 is. If you know how to move this x over here and flip your equation, then you know how to do the mathematics that's required from now all the way up until Gen Chem 2. Now I may add some logarithms and things like this, but at the end of the day, every equation in chemistry is this equation. That, I mean, that, that's it, that's all that there is to know about it. So for stoichiometry, the equation that we use for this, for stoichiometry is um, big A, I'm sorry, little a over big A is equal to little b over big B. Now, I know this equation is named after Dr. Jesse Ye, who is the professor who gave it to me, but in this, big A and big B are your amount. It, what is something that your amount must be in? Well, your amount must be in moles. Now, you can also use this for something in Chem 2, uh, which is when we talk about pressure changes and things like that. It can also be used for other types of concentration units, but also, for now, I just want you to think of it as used for uh, measuring amounts. Now, the big A, I'm sorry, the little a and the little b are your coefficients. So the little a and little b are your coefficients from your balanced chemical equation, and it must be balanced. Next thing is percent yield, um, and I'm going to go ahead and just talk about that real quick. So percent yield is defined as actual yield over your theoretical times 100 percent. Now because of things like entropy um, that's continuously making most reactions really inefficient, uh, your actual and theoretical, your percent yield will never be above like 50 or 60 percent. This is all just hypothetical numbers here. Now let's talk about the limiting reagent. So the way that you determine what the limiting reagent is is based off of the mole ratios from your balanced equation. So I'm going to go ahead and switch that to purple. It's based off of the the mole ratios from your equation, from your balanced equation. All right, so this is just an example problem using the uh, concept of stoichiometry to find out what something is. So in this sample problem, you're given 37.8 grams of CO2, of carbon dioxide, and I want to know, assuming I have an excess amount of water, plenty of water, how many grams of glucose, C6H12O6, I can make. So all that I have to do is first make sure that my equation is balanced. Is it balanced? Well, uh, no. But remember that I talk about terms like techniques that you can use to balance uh, general equations. But the best way to do it is to start off with something that only occurs once on either side. So I can use hydrogen or carbon. I'm just going to go ahead and I'll go ahead and solve it for hydrogen. Might as well. I put ahead and put a six in front of that. I end up with 12 here, 12 here. Now I have to balance it with carbon. I have to put a six in front of that. Uh, and that should, relatively speaking, balance it. Now I have the oxygen that I have to worry about. That's the only thing left. Well, I have 6 here and I have 12 there, so I have to make sure that this is all balanced. I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in that we have 6 there. So our equation is now balanced. Cool. Now I'm going to plug this into my equation of little a over big A is equal to little b over big B. But remember, these amounts must be in moles. So First thing I, do, I have to do is convert that to moles. So I have 37.8 grams of CO2, and I need to convert that to moles. So I'm going to go ahead and just multiply that by my grams per mole, my molar mass of my compound. Carbon is 12, uh, oxygen is 16, and I have two of those. I'm just going to tell you right off that I, it's kind of sad that I know this, but it's 44. Ah. 44 grams per, make that a number one sign, one mole of CO2. So whenever I plug that in, I know that my grams cancel and I get my answer in moles. Let me punch that into my calculator real quick. That equates to about, uh, about 0.859, and I'm gonna go ahead and keep it in three significant figures because that's what I was given, 0.859 
moles of CO2. Moles of CO2. Okay, so now I'm going to use that, and I'm going to plug that into this equation to, to I guess, exemplify this. So um, let's just kind of build on this for a sec. So my coefficient for this from my balanced chemical equation of CO2 was 6. So I'm going to put that on the top. And then on the bottom, I have my amount in moles, which is 0.859 is equal to... What is my coefficient for C2? Well, that's just a 1, so I'm going to leave that as 1, and I want to know the amount of that that I can produce by that. So all I have to do in this context is flip this equation. So I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to flip it like that. And what that gives me is that gives me a question mark is equal to 0.859 divided by 6. So once I punch that into my calculator, what do I get? 0 0.143 moles of glucose, C6H12O2, C6H12O6, sorry. So, but it wants the answer in grams, so what do I have to do? Well, I have to convert that moles to grams, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in over here, 1, 0.143 moles over 1 times the molar mass of glucose, which is sad that I know this, uh, but it's about 180. So I'm going to make sure that my moles cancel out, and then I multiply that by 180, and I get about 26 grams. I'm rounding that to three sig figs.